everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. That's right, with me, Lewis, uh, your favourite, just a millennial, uh, P Flax, uh, who is the world's truest boomer, and Sips, who is probably uncategorizable. He just went and got his driving license renewed. That's right. Uh, congrats. Did you have to queue up at the DMV for like 12 hours? I did, and I had to do an eye test, and I We don't I have a it. DMV in this country. We have the DVLA. So I, got, <laughs> I don't um, think they even have that on Jersey. Sips just said he went to the village hall or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, had to, uh, I had to get a uh, heavy goods license because uh, I've got to transport my hog everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> Your hog? <laughs> yeah, my fucking, <laughs> fucking dogger. You've got um, a gig- gigantic German sausage. You're just guys. It's been two weeks since we had a podcast. Um, normally, yes. Lewis gets very excited when we don't have when we have a big gap between podcasts because everybody has so many stories to tell, uh, experiences and stuff like that. So, in the past two weeks, have either of you guys done anything noteworthy, uh, like other than like your usual stuff, or what? Because, like, I had done nothing. <laughs> I did have an interesting thought yesterday. Right. Okay, no, let's go with that. Start with that. Right. Start with the interesting thought. I think that's what it is. This is, like, old men shower thoughts. Yeah. Right? yeah. When you look down in the shower and you look at yourself and you're disappointed. <laughs> you ever, um, you're ever in the shower for a while and you're, you're thinking about stuff and you lose track of time. And then all of a sudden you look at your hands very pruney and you're like, how fucking long have I been in here for? And, and all you're <laughs> like thinking about is like, I wonder what kind of bush would look good on the side of my house or whatever. But that has taken four hours of thinking. Oh. You know what I mean? Have yeah. you? Are you guys at that point in your life? Yeah, of course. Yeah, same. Well, I mean, I think that that might be because you love, you've been playing Planet Zoo, I oh, noticed. Man, and whenever I, I tune into your stream, have there, you are building a wall. There is some sort of wall yeah. being built, like an yeah. oriental wall yeah. or a stone oh, wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you see the, 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 did you see the palace that I created? Yeah. The oriental? Oh, man. I can't believe that you oh. managed to like create something so, I mean, Obviously, Incredible! Yeah. I don't know whether to put it down to them building really good tools yeah. or you just being, being a natural. really good tool myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's hard to any, distinguish. Any, yeah, I I don't know. I think I I don't think about uh, home decoration um, no. when I'm in the shower. I do I, a little I, bit. I, I never get around to actually doing any home decoration because I'm pretty lazy. But I think about it a lot. Like I I think about how I would like my house to look. But I never put into motion anything to make it look like that. Well, mostly because home decoration is what you do once you have a tidy house. And I feel like my house, my place is like my flat is always, there's always mess to, do, to clean up. So before I have like, you know, I have to pick up all the dirty clothes off the floor and put all the, do all the washing up and put the washing in. And then I'm like, oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. I, I, that's the limit at which I stop thinking about it. I think people who have like your parents, you always have this lovely tidy house. They yeah. constantly put it doing. Th- they're thinking about loft conversion. They're thinking about building a conservatory. They're thinking about oh, maybe we should do another fence in the garden. Um, but you have to start from like a baseline. You know, there you can't. Ev- I can't even hold the capacity. Yeah. In my brain to think about improving. My place um, looks like a like a Rainbow Six Siege map. Um. <laughs> I was gonna say a, I was gonna say a prop hunt map after a few uh, grenades no, gone no. off. No, no, it looks like it looks like the SWAT team invaded, <laughs> and uh, some like flashbangs <laughs> were thrown in my living room. And there's oh my god, there's crap everywhere all the time. Yeah, it's it's great though, except for on a Tuesday because we get the house is cleaned on a Tuesday. Um, oh, our cleaner our cleaner comes today. She's probably here now, and the kids come home from school, and the house is spotless for like an hour. Yeah. I'm just like. Keep it like this. Yeah. And then, then it's knee deep. Yes. Literally like within an hour. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but it goes from being spotless to being the garbage compactor in Star Wars within the space <laughs> of like an hour. <laughs> I'm the little yeah. tentacle creature. You just hope that the walls aren't closing in because you're going to yeah. have like I'm the little tentacle light under the water pops up. Wibble! 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 It goes back down. That's pretty Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is that one of the kids or is that like an alien? Something touched my leg. It could be a child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Planet Zoo is so good. Oh, it's great. 
It is it isn't perfect though. It it crashes a bit. There's a couple of bugs and stuff. Yeah, it's I just saw a tweet come out from so. Duncan that he had like a flamingo or whatever in a pool of water and it died of dehydration. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> literally in uh, a pool of water. Yeah, he was complaining a bit about it, but he's been addicted to it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I suppose that's the I have a uh, a, a hippo thing. enclosure where part of it is um it, 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 it's, it's amazing because you can use scenery to build bridges that staff will use, which I think is amazing. Like they programmed it to the AI for staff to recognize bits of scenery that you might be using as a bridge and they'll cross it because my hippo enclosure is water with like little islands. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the hippos can swim, right? So like I figured, okay, cool. They'll go in, swim, make it to the other islands or whatever. But at first I didn't have little bridges. So the islands were isolated and they were covered in shit. Like they, the hippos would swim over there and shit all over these islands. And then constantly the game would be complaining about this enclosure being like a disease risk and there's shit everywhere and stuff. So I built these bridges so that the, the keepers could go in, cross the bridges and, and suck up all the shit from the islands, right? But what happened is also there's like a shallow bit of water that the hippos used to cross over to get to these islands. That's full of shit too. There's just shit everywhere. <laughs> so like, I can't clean it up. It's like a, it's like a nuclear it's waste like a dump now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I can't do anything with it. It's just gonna be like that forever. It needs. It needs, <clears throat> we need a super fund uh, to cover like sort out the site. Yeah, yeah. and like fucking yeah. Chernobyl. This, this it's zone. it's a bad it's a bad one. Yeah. So oh my god. Yeah. So no, I I um so so I I went on holiday. Um, as a result, I I installed. Apple Arcade. Right. Have you heard of this? It's like this subscription service that Apple have added to like games. I, I think I, I get the impression it's Apple's answer to having all those shitty fucking microtransaction wanky yeah. exploitative all of games. them. Every every mobile game is like Because that. what they've done is they've added this subscription and it's relatively cheap, I think. It's like six quid a month or something. And you get like a hundred, I'm not kidding. Um mostly completely wank mobile games but because they've been sort of paid for or whatever by apple arcade because apple i guess apple have just thrown money at all of them yeah to say you do you want to be in apple arcade we'll give you a hundred thousand dollars or whatever each yeah um they have said but to be in this you have to have no microtransactions um and and so a lot of the games obviously were in development like people were like making a mobile game they were thinking oh how am i going to get this publicized you know what am i going to do it's full of microtransactions and they've had to like pull all that out at the last minute but it's still got all of that either kind of half assed wanky mobile microtransaction-y bullshit in there and so a lot of these games are just they're just shit. I, I, it's so funny. It's like it's like uh, they're they're so like unfinished or like like bad or like just really like like base stock Unity assets um, or like weird like unfinished UI. And some of them are just like shit. Like one of them is called like fucking Word Worm or something, and it's like literally like a stock image of like a shuttle stock image of a a cat comes up, and you have like a, a like a fucking letters on the screen, and you just have to join the letters C A T. Right, and it's like. How is this a fucking? Do you know what I mean? It's like how has that made it into Apple Arcade? You know, I, at least I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more premium than that. But they have obviously attracted some legitimate, decent-ish games in there, and I've, I've played a few that have, that have been good. Do you know what it reminds um, me of? You used to be able to buy these cassette tapes that were a hundred games on one tape, or oh, like a Super yeah, Nintendo yeah. thing. It was like. A hundred games on this cartridge. Oh my god, it does remind me of that. Remember the yeah. remember when game demos were like much bigger than they are now in popularity? Like remember you used to buy a PC gaming PC magazine gamer, or whatever? PC zone, yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah, for the used demo. To get, you used to get a CD with I'm not even kidding, like five hundred demos. It was on crazy. It. Most of them um, were garbage, but there'd well, be a yeah, demo for like were, yeah. like the, the demo for Duke Nukem yes. 3D. That was a whole level. Yeah. And that was unbelievable. And yeah, I, just I played, played that, that over and over and over again. Same. I played it a lot. Yeah. And uh, Worms. There was a demo of Worms. When I was at university, this was the first year of university, I got the demo for Worms on the PC. And I, I was the only one in the house that had a PC. So I installed it on there. And all the other lads in the house I was living in would break into my room when I was out to play Worms. Because if I was out, they're like, well, we still want to play Worms. So <laughs> they would break into my house, to, to my flat, right? Well, my room in, in the in the building we were in, because we were in like we weren't in halls. We we got a whole house, 
And over the course of the months, I had no idea they were doing this. Over the course of the months, there was the, the windowsill under my, the main window facing the street had a big hole in it. And I was like, oh no, the, the wood must have rotted away just with the damp, because it was a crap house. So I was like, oh God, I have to pay for that. Only several years later did my best mate, Simon, reveal to me that he, climbing in through the window, had put his foot through the windowsill and crunched it and never told me. Because they would sneak in to and play, play worms. worms. Sneak oh in. Because one of them would climb in and let the rest in. They'd all play worms. And then I guess one of them would keep watch. I was like, you could have just asked. Like, just say, can we play worms <laughs> and just leave your door unlocked? I mean, it, you know, it wouldn't have been a problem. But it was so weird. Oh, and man. then they, they blew it. Because one time, for a joke, they hid a load of potatoes around the room. Because me and Mrs. F stayed at, were at university together. So they, they had a bag of old potatoes and they hid them all over our room, including in her underwear drawer. She was livid. She was beyond <laughs> livid. Nice. So <laughs> that was that. Well, did, is it not one of those cases where... So I thought the story was going to go that you didn't find them all. And, oh, no. Well, you know, we found them like all. one... Because once we it found one, one, Mrs. F was like, I can't sleep in here till we found all these potatoes. I was like, fine. Found yeah. them everywhere. It's like, it's like the chicken in the back seat, you know, classic, like just forgotten about or put a fish in someone's glove compartment. Like, oh. My, my like, friend stored a half eaten Burger King burger in his glove compartment one time. This was just, this was during a road trip. We took a road trip to uh, Montreal. It's not really a road trip. It's a two hour drive from Ottawa to Montreal to go see Monday Night Raw. Uh, wrestling live he was hung over and sick and uh to cure this decided to eat a burger king burger in a moving car <laughs> ate half of it and then put the other half in the glove compartment and it was there for like a week i think he just like, <laughs> forgot about it oh yeah oh my god his car that kind of stunk of burgers oh. forever after that <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, if you wanted to take revenge on someone in that way, like, I, I read a horrible one, which always gives me nightmares, which is, like, someone getting, like, a, a tub of, like, fish paste and then, like, just a paintbrush and just painting it, like, you know, in the in the door cracks, you know, like, behind the door in the hinges, you know, where you can't easily get to and, like, on the inside of plug sockets. Do you know what I mean? Like, the kind of places where um, the FBI, like... <laughs> unscrews when they're looking for you know drugs or something you know these these like inside the panel inside the fridge you know that you don't think it comes off the fridge door or whatever but you can get it in there you know these kind of places yeah Clever, right? oh ingenious yeah I, I really like i that. know that 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 uh was it el chapo or one of those lads that had a a bathtub and under the bathtub there was an escape tunnel yes so yeah the the, the bathtub was like a pneumatic lift thing so it go and you climb down the tunnel and then close the bathtub over the top of you. Thought that was yeah. And they, they, they'll find it in the movie by like they'll be they'll be like they'll be the detective like at the end of his tether and he's like drunk and he's like and he knocks like the whiskey bottle on the, he's looking at himself in like the bathroom mirror and he knocks the whiskey bottle, or he punches the mirror and he punches his face and his face cracks yeah and it knocks like a glass of water a glass of whiskey yeah on the floor, he's so frustrated it, that he can't crack yeah. the case and then the that, whiskey he, rolls yeah. to the edge of the bath and then you hear his trickling yeah and then and he, he turns has that. and music starts. <laughs> He's got that. He has that moment of clarity all of a sudden. And then montage of on. them lifting up the bathtub, and then they're can't finding the lads down in the tunnel. I don't know what that music was. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, well. that's, that's the movie I gotta watch. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, imagine like that you're that watching song. a movie, you're getting all engrossed and stuff. There's this like amazing part coming up. He just discovers that like it was Hitler all along, and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like Robocop music. Right, what instrument that, even is that? If you took a dramatic moment from a movie and put that music over the top of it, I think that would improve it. Big drum beat. Yeah, Where big, you go. You gotta have a huge drum beat for that. Yeah. That's I think the one. the thing I'm most looking forward to at Christmas actually <laughs> is watching back like good 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 movies you know like re really rewatchable movies like back to the future you know 
um, Lord of the Rings, Jurassic Park, you know, the classics, man. Like, I want to just just classics. do a back to back of like lazy movies on Christmas. Man, I really. I'm already done I... with Christmas. Honestly, oh, they've already started playing the music the and stuff in the here. stores, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm done. I, I hate it. I haven't really noticed uh, about like them playing the music in stores and stuff and seeing the decorations. Oh. I feel like I'm, I've not been hit with it too hard in the face. I just never leave the house, so Christmas starts when I want it to start. Right. That's pretty much it. Yeah, when that... is that? December the 24th. Right. Okay. Good Lord. <laughs> a very, very, it's one and done Christmas. Well, yeah. I think we we, uh, we we talk about this every year about the decorations. Oh, and yeah. And oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a big thing because the kids are still too little to really help. So you say to them, help Get me hang out. the baubles. They break half the baubles, you know? That's yeah. a such an excuse that like, you just get them and just get them and do look if you can get your kids to work p flax put them to work do you know what i mean they're oh, just I put them to work hungry but they're fucking hopeless this is it's it's sometimes worse having a bad employee than having to do it yourself that's it you, I see. you just have to clean up after them you're like do this and they half arsedly do it or fuck it up you're like shit now i've got to undo their shitty attempt and then do it myself as well yeah so sometimes kids, you just kids think are, it's not worth it. are all glory and no guts that's the problem with kids <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's such a boomer thing to say Say, isn't it? It's right so there? true, though, isn't it? Like, because the always don't understand the value of a good to hard they wanna, work. They want to be. They want to turn around and say that they've done it, but they don't want to put the work in. You know what I mean? Oh, that's true. Like that's kids. that's what it's I like. Mean, we weren't yeah. grafters back in our day, were we? No, we were kids. We were idiots. It's just the speak same. For your, speak your fucking self. I worked hard, okay, to get where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think humans. Did, I think we we're just the same as lazy as them, but we've got better at hiding it. Um, no, we I just, know. I th- you get to a point as an adult where you realize there's some shit you just got to do. You don't like it, yeah. but you got to do it. It's like when you're a kid and it's, you know, someone, someone, your parents say to you, we've got to go to granny's house today. You think, fuck that noise. Why would shit. I want to do that? That's going to suck. Granny's house is boring. Smells of granny. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, but you know but what? You got to do uh, it. At the same time, though, sure, but. Smells I, of salmon. It smells like salmon <laughs> most of the time, yeah. But you got to find the bright side of everything, right? Every every cloud has a has a silver lining, right? <laughs> sure. An unusual note of positivity from Sips. Sure. Let's hear sure, this. you got to go to Granny's house and it sucks and it smells like fish and stuff and nobody nobody has fun there and it, and it stinks and it and it sucks. But and it's boring. And, no Wi-Fi. and it's boring. There's no Wi-Fi. But on the bright side. She might have the new Sears catalog, so you could look at people in bras. That's true. I don't actually. even know if Sears is still around, but right. that's what I used to do. I, and there's nothing wrong with me now. Look, I came, I turned out fine um, after looking at all those. I oh, used to love looking at the titties in the catalog. So, yeah, me so too. hang on a sec. Let me just talk. Let's talk about this for a second, because this is some fucking real talk, right? Yeah. He, here's, I think I had a shower thought this morning. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now this is a weird one, but uh, because partly because YouTube have come out finally yeah. with their announcement that if you are making videos aimed at kids, uh-huh. you need to check a little box that says you're doing that. And I, and obviously, there's a bunch of um, reasons to do that, partly to protect kids yep. from things, yep. but also to, to protect kids from being exploited um, and being filmed by their parents and being made to make videos. Yeah. And lots of, lots yeah, of, that... There's lots of other massive problems on YouTube which are overdue being fixed. But also, for a very long time, it feels like the presounding pres- pres- sentiment that I've heard from YouTube and also been told to do on YouTube is to make your videos kid friendly, right? Because if you make your videos kid friendly, it gets better ads. Can't mention Hitler. Can't say anything adult. Can't say bad words because you get blocked. Or so everyone should be making happy kids videos. And also, so many kids watch YouTube that in fact, you need to make your thumbnails have arrows and faces and these ways because eight year eight to 13 year olds drive YouTube. They click things, they click things, they click loads <laughs> they of click, ads. They're clicking they, and you know, clicking, and all day long but it they're is. clicking. It is like, but an adult sees a pop up ad, they won't click it, but a kid will. And so that they, those those things that are attractive to kids are what the algorithms push forwards. Okay. And so that's why they said that a little bit like how teenage girls used to drive the top top the top of the pops you know that whatever score went to number whatever song went to number one that was because teenage girls went and bought it it's the same but it's teenage boys and girls clicking on things which makes youtube videos successful that's what we've been told and that's what youtube is we all understood that but now we're being informed that 
if you if you're targeting kids so if your videos are directly targeted kids which i think a lot of people won't know sometimes whether their audience is. A little bit like when when notch originally launched minecraft he didn't realize you know he hosted my in vegas he didn't know that his game was played by kids and he was shocked by the amount of kids playing it and obviously you know we now know that it's an incredibly kid focused game but you know if we make a minecraft video is that directed kids? I think it's a very strange area. Anyway, I was thinking about this because I was thinking about this and then uh, Pornhub. Okay, right, Jesus. Right. Of course you were. Sorry. Yeah. You know how like um, there's this thing we talked about on this podcast before about the most popular kind of porn is the like stepsister oh, and stepbrother. Man, porn. I was talking about no, this yesterday. No, it depends yesterday, on where actually. you are. You could, there's a oh. map of porn by topic by country. That you can look right. at. It's very interesting. Well, I was wondering. I feel if, like that would be very popular in America. It's uh, popular in very certain parts of America. Yes, stepsister. Is stuff. that coming from teenagers though? Do you know what I mean? No, that's, it's, that's what I it's wanna... mostly coming from me, honestly. <laughs> I mean that. I, I don't. <laughs> All right, North, North America that. and Britain, the most popular stuff. Lesbian. I guess yeah. my shower thought is that I guess like when we were kids like that we had the the sears catalog the mns bras bras section you know and we had maybe <laughs> Bra, a the, dirty copy the bras of, and panties section yeah Fuck, i hate that and we had panties we, who fucking we had, says like, that if we were lucky we had a copy of daily sport in the woods or we fucking had somebody had managed to get like some or horrible like like Dutch magazine with like some woman shoving candles up a vagina. Nice. You know, uh, that was, What's that the name was of it. That you know, that was, that was it. <laughs> Do you know, what I mean? uh, you know, someone got it on a French trip or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It was like it was it came from the continent. I'm not saying we were like it was censored, but it certainly wasn't in. It was wasn't easy to get your hands on porn when we were kids, right? Or teenage, even teenagers. Like yeah. it was, it was trickier, and the internet was really only dawning for us. And you know, it wasn't really. Well, until... it was like top sh top shelf stuff, right? I, like the magazine, yeah. the magazine, like at the convenience store, wherever you used to get your magazines from. It was like they were at the top. They were on the top shelf, and they had that like <laughs> that barrier thing. Remember? Yeah, you used to have to dare people to go in and buy them. But uh, but uh, equally, I feel like there's this this we're being told we're constantly being told like that things are happening like kind of in the world that obviously like like in Japan, you know men aren't interested in women because like you know they, and they well because, if you look at they... their porn searches do you know what the number one is in japan hentai yeah <laughs> i'm not kidding i'm looking at the data right now he's got the data folks. china china and japan it's hentai in he's got india the, he's got the it's data teen. folks it's teen we, we, got, we got this generation growing up well i'm not I, I sound like a boomer okay i do here but i i guess like i'm interested because it is. It does make me feel detached now. I'm a bit older from what kids grew up with today, and you know we've had you know ten years of, of internet porn. That's like a whole generation of kids growing up with very uh, access to you know stuff on their phones that you know we could only dream of back in you know yeah. when we were teenagers, and they can get it a, a lot younger than us. Like you know, there's kids. I was thinking you know this morning about like kids growing up with iPads and how cool that is and having access to Wikipedia. But then again, like I, I was on Wikipedia yesterday looking at something and suddenly I was like, it was like a shock site. The Wikipedia for me has now become the place where I'm exposed to the most disgusting images by accident. I think I was clicking around about something and some guy died and I was like, oh, I wonder what that disease is. And I clicked on it. I was like, ah! Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's, it's obviously an important resource. And I remember it reminded me of a time when I was like, um, I don't know, I was like seven or eight or something. And my mum had these like medical grade textbooks, you know, on a shelf. Right. And I was obviously as a kid, I was like rummaging through stuff, just bored looking for stuff to do. And I obviously opened this fucking tome and it was like a dictionary. And it had like a picture on there of some guy covered in sores or something. And it was like some, something pretty gross. And I remember it as this being this moment in my childhood that was like not traumatic, but certainly like 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 unpleasant and it affects it didn't affect me i remember it now i don't know if it hurt me or anything i'm fine now kids are very resilient etc but like i'm just you know i think that, that, that i read this whole, whole bunch of stuff about self improvement and i i don't really watch porn anymore um, right. because i read that it was very bad for your brain like very right. very like kind of um poisonous for you and i be, i sort of believed it right um and and so I don't know. I'm just I just. What do you guys think about that? Because you you have kids, I suppose. Um, and I watch a lot of porn as well. What do I think about exactly. it? Let me think. Hmm. 
Um, <laughs> when I'm when 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 I decide to turn on and watch some porn, uh, my 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 brain doesn't really come into it at all. Uh, my 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 donger sends a message to my brain that says I'm ready to rock and roll, and uh, right. and then my brain goes into like this autopilot mode where like it goes through the checklist of things that need to happen before we could turn on the porn and just start you know squeezing squeezing my hog. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to your hog. <laughs> you have to. Well, there's a series of guidelines for squeezing the hog. You know, it's right. a heavy goods vehicle, so you need to ensure this you've got. It. You know, yeah, you got to get your eyes checked. Got the correct safety I, equipment. Run through the mental. Run through the mental checklist. Yeah, you got to. It's like yeah. like preparing a ship to leave port. You know, that's right. Then, yeah, you yeah. got to see like is 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 has get everything everybody, squared away? Has everybody left the squared house? Squared away. Check engines. Yeah. Check. Um, is uh, are all <laughs> have I have I closed all the curtains? check uh, <laughs> right. you know there's other things that you gotta you gotta check right you gotta you gotta set the mood you gotta get you get ready to <laughs> rock and roll the mood for sneaky light the candle watching. check you gotta you gotta you gotta light the candles light yeah. the candles get the little potpourri bowl going in the corner that's there. the one yeah that's the one prepare Pleasant the moist music. towelette yes <laughs> Get the porn music going. Yeah, yeah. Get the mood music going. You got to break out that uh, that two liter bottle of uh, Crystal Pepsi that everybody thinks is just like a, a, a bottle of Crystal Pepsi, but really it's lube in there. You put lube in there. Oh, that's clever. Um, oh my god. Yeah, because you, you're gonna fuck it. Because everybody in your house hates Crystal Pepsi. I, I, right? I've so. never used uh, lube for, for for wanking. I don't know why why you need lube. Uh, maybe no. it makes it better. It just seems like it would be super messy. Well, I mean, uh, it's well, well, okay. <laughs> Go on, Lewis. What were you going to say about it? <laughs> well, first of all, um, some people are circumcised. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, you've got to consider that. What, they need lube if they're circumcised? Yeah, because they don't have a um foreskin. I understand that. But right. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I didn't realize that, that they needed lube to get off. That sucks. Yeah, you definitely do. Shout out to all the circumcised guys out there jerking it with a dry hand. Once, you've, to- yeah. once you've lubed once, you'll never go back. Um, flex. It's a different experience. It is a different yeah. experience for sure. And, yeah, I'll give it a go. Uh, I'll report a, my findings back. A later very, <laughs> a very pleasant one, I might add. <laughs> Why wait? Very pleasant. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here, let's see if I can get a zip sound on the on the tripod. Did you hear that zip? <laughs> yeah, heard it. <laughs> it was very disappointed. Very, sh- it's very sh- like, not very a big, unsatisfying not a very cool zip, zip sound. It's a, it's a, it's a well worn zip. Is an old in movies they always add this artificially. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think a lot of the time in movies, you, I think they film something and it's like, yeah, that doesn't sound enough. It's all Foley, sound enough Foley like work. A chainsaw. Song, yeah. yeah, everyone always adds It's like, you know shit. that fucking squeaky gate noise that they put in every friggin' movie? Someone opens a gate. Mwah. Once you've heard it, you'll hear it in every... No, it's like a... Eep, like that. It's just a really quick squeaky noise. They put it in Ooh. every fucking film. Once you've heard it, it's like the Wilhelm scream. You can't unhear it. It's a stupid sound effect that the lazy Foley artists out there, you know who you are, use it because they think it's funny to put the same fucking clip in every time. Lazy fuckers, get out there, get a microphone, get a squeaky gate and make your own. Don't fucking use the off-the-shelf there stock shit. There are a shit. bunch of sound effects that, you, that I've, over 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 my 35 years, come to recognize yeah. as well. Like there's a... There's a bunch of explosions, and certainly gun sounds, like shotgun sounds, stuff like this, like and reload sounds. Like you, can, they're the same fucking ones that have been used for like 25 years. And you know, a shotgun doesn't doesn't sound like a shotgun if you don't, you know, do that. And the fucking, you know, the same. What annoys me is that the guys always cocking the shotgun. I'm like, what? Were you not ready to go? You know what I mean? You didn't I cock know. it before you went in there. You decided you're gonna cock it just before you shot the lad. Just fucking put one in the chamber. What are you doing? Don't clown around. Just get be ready. <laughs> They like I, I would use, say that. They, I would like they to, like stop to that. use that shotgun reloading sound in like memes and stuff too, don't they? Like that. Yeah. Like that reload sound. They use it in it's memes. True. Overused. So anyway, <laughs> half an hour ago, memes. half an hour ago, I mentioned an interesting thought I'd had. Right. right? Oh yeah. Go on, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So go on then. yesterday we went to Sainsbury's. We had to pick up a few odds and ends. And my do- I said to the girls, "You can you can buy a bag of crisps each for lunch tomorrow because we're almost out of crisps." So my youngest, my youngest gets <laughs> what a treat. I know she gets a bag of prawn cocktail. Shout out prawn cocktail, Chris. Okay, it's a lot she of shout to, outs today. Like, you need what, to discipline that. What's child. wrong with prawn cocktail? What? Well, what's not wrong with prawn not, cocktail? Nothing, you read an but, article that says every time someone eats prawn cocktail, it shaves six months off their life or something. No, it's just my personal belief that anyone who likes prawn cocktail is probably going to be a serial killer. I in love the future, it. So. 
So watch yeah. yourself. What makes you think that? That's a, that's an interesting line of thinking um, from or from, from a guy who I would say traditionally would fit the serial killer um, <laughs> description. I, yeah, I, right. I, walk me through this one. I want to. I want to know more. Like it's a small niche of people yes. who enjoy a very weird taste, right? Right, and it must have. Must have come from somewhere. Like they, they probably had a traumatic experience that led them <laughs> down that path, okay. an untreated mental disorder. Right. Um, or they're just a, a nan. Like, do you know what I mean? They're, uh, they're, they're old before their time. Is your daughter like, does she sometimes, does she like knitting? No. Does she sort of. The other, the she... other my eldest bought a bag of quavers. Yeah, quavers okay, are, right? are acceptable. Reasonable choice for right, a child. But it was a grab bag of quavers. Sure. And well, she's that? a kid. Right. What, but what's here's she going to eat? Thing. Like the man size one? No. No, would, I'm just you saying. Want, you don't grab, want that for your children. Grab, grab bag is big, right? That's the, the one the way you can. It, oh, the huge yeah. bag. But, oh, but it, sorry. The, I thought it, you meant the little, little no, bag. No, 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 no. This is about, it's only slightly bigger than a normal bag of quavers. But it has grab bag and a picture of a little hand going, like grabbing the crisps. Now I'm thinking, just because there's more in there, does that mean you have to eat them like Shrek eating a bag of crisps? Like, why is the what is the instruction? Why is it a grab bag? What has changed? Just because there's more of it, suddenly I'm putting my whole hand in and grabbing handfuls of quavers to shove in my mouth all at once. Because I eat my crisps. Two fingers, like like my fingers, are like chopsticks. What a time! I, reach in, I don't. Pick out crisp, I, I, in it goes. Are you I, grabbing a handful of just going no, no. and shoving them away? I in? used I used two fingers to to pinch them so that I have less to clean up after I finish eating. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying this this grab two, bag. You is can implying... just you could just run your two fingers like under a running tap, right? Yeah, and just and like you're good sort to go. of rinse them off, and you're ready to go. That's what I'm I saying. I used to know someone who would open the bag and then crush up the crisps inside into a crisp um crisp tritus they called it and then it would just they just pour it into their mouth that, that, that would be is it would be like fucking, a quick right? That's disgusting. disgusting yeah that is, that is point me at that, that person animal. animal of the year point me at that person so i can do a, a gbh that, I, that. I, I don't i don't <laughs> i don't know if the grab bag first of all no, i think the grab bag I'm not. No one should be fisting their crisp packets. You know, grabbing fistfuls of crisps. That's madness. I don't you get know. it. If 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 you offer someone a bag and they put their fist in there and grab a hat, like a five, like a popcorn fistful of. I mean, you a popcorn fistful is fine in the cinema. Like if you're grabbing someone else's popcorn, you're having like a lot. Yeah. But even that's rude, right? That's rude. If it's yours and you're sharing it, maybe you can do that. And then you can hold your, you can eat out of your hand for a while, you know. Um, but straight from the fist to the mouth, no. I don't get I it. I mean, who eats like is that? Is that a search term? A popular fist search to mouth. term? Very popular in <laughs> Lebanon, apparently. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm looking at the map here, and I, I'm a big fan of BBW, right? I like, I like, I like the larger ladies, big booties, big tits. Oh, I thought that was a type of crisp. No. The, I the tried only that. country in the world where that is a popular search term is Somalia. <laughs> Shout out to right. Somalia. Man, <laughs> Shout well, okay. out to Somalia representing the BBW. What else are we shouting out today? This is too many shout outs. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like... <laughs> Shout out to Quavers. It's like being Scrap at bag. the MTV Awards in the 90s. Like the, the, the amount of shout outs. Shout-outs? They're free. It's free. I'm just giving them a shout out. It's free. We can give shout outs. You can give but, a fucking shout yeah. out right now. You're jealous you got no one to shout out. All right, shout out to all those people out there who aren't shouting people out for every goddamn thing. I mean, who cares? Jeez. I'm shouting out a whole country here. <laughs> yeah, well, good for you. We don't need any more shout outs. We've had enough now. I'll That's give it. as many right, fucking no... shout outs as I want to give. All right, all right. Jesus. All right, look, I think the grab bag, I think the idea. Shout out to grab is bags! The, <laughs> fucking grab bags. You can. You Down can. With grab it's bags. like the fucking. It's like the big gulp, right? It's just a way to get people to eat more of your product and pay more of it in the under the guise that you're going to share it with someone. But actually, you're just going to eat the whole fucking thing yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, no I, one's sharing no hand. fucking grab bags. It's the icon of the little grabbing hand. It's like, ugh, get in there. Grab these It's crisps. like sharing. No, but it's a sherry bag. That's the point. It sounds like it's it's got this illusion of sharing, you know, whereas actually it's just more greed, yeah. fatness. It's like X king size, you know? <laughs> Do you feel like a king now you're eating a king size one? No! You're just fatter. <laughs> Do you know what oh I mean? My but God. kings are fat, like you! Oh, like, no, I, I don't know. Fuck you. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll, eat, I'll grab my king size 
hog anytime I like. Yeah, I'll grab my king size <laughs> hog as well anytime I like. So let me talk about food for a second, <laughs> right. right? I went to uh, uh, when I was on holiday. I went to a um, sushi restaurant. Okay, and I had some nice sushi. Right, right? now this. Is Where did you go on holiday, which, by the way? You didn't uh, mention private. It's, it's private. A bit, I'm keeping it. It's a, I'm keeping it. I, it's a secret. I'm experimenting with the idea of keeping something in my life private. <laughs> this is another thing I want to talk about. But I, 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 I went on holiday, but I'm not telling people where I went. And I, I want to. I've told a few oh people. I want to see. I want to see how soon it gets out where I was on holiday. Wow. Because right? it wasn't anywhere weird or anything. Oh. It's just fine. Um, I bet it was fucking weird if you're keeping it a secret. You left the country though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to a nice place. It was nice. It was sunny, really sunny. Anyway. Portugal. Uh, went to... Close. <laughs> he went... He had sushi. I don't think they have sushi, sushi in Portugal. Uh, uh, what? No. In the whole of Portugal? In all of Portugal, It's yeah. a coastal fucking country. Uh, he just went, he went to fucking Spain. Fucking he, just, he went to Spain. I went to Spain. Fuck it. Well, I was already out. <laughs> I did was. You, I did didn't you, know. Did you actually go to Spain? But it's, where else is sunny? Yeah, well, I went to fucking Spain anyway. Oh, uh, my God. I went you to, are such went, a fucking chav. Like, where did you go? <laughs> where did you go? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Uh, uh, I was slightly embarrassed. Did you fucking wear your tracky bottoms every single day while you were there too? You I did. Fucking <laughs> I walked around on the chef. beach. Fucking Spain is nice. Don't don't flame it. It was nice. It was really nice. Anyway, <laughs> you know what? Was don't, don't shout flame. out to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. Don't flame Spain. <laughs> Uno shout out to Al Espano. Oh, there you go. What's the fucking search term in Spain? P flex. Look it up. Anal. Right. Oh my <laughs> straight, god. Yeah. <laughs> straight away. What do you think the biggest Weird. one in Italy is? Oh, have a uh, think. Uh, think I, about cultural stuff. It's not uh, priests or anything pasta, like that. Uh, like um, oh, pizza. Think about the. Be... Think about the Italian mentality when it comes to women. Ha ha hairy. No. Um, uh, uh, oh, aloof, ba ba like banano in Mamma Mia. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's MILF. MILF. Um, oh, all right. MILF. Of course <laughs> banano, it would be. Yeah. Banano in Mamma Mia. Yes. <laughs> banano. Please tell me it's close. Uh, put the, the <laughs> banana in the Mamma Mia. <laughs> is, it, is it MILF? It's MILF. Is it? I can't believe it. I love that. I love it. it. I love MILFs. Of course it is. Mamma Mia. Of course Milf. it that's is. A, that's Sorry. a really 90s term as well, isn't it? From American Pie. Fucking MILFs. It is. <laughs> Fucking MILF, dude. First spring break with MILFs. <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> it, dude. It's uh, fucking. Yeah. As I've gotten exactly. older, I found that the MILF porn is, is definitely more attractive to me to watch than it was when I was a younger man. Right. Because, you know, why would I want to... Have sex with a milk. It's your age I'm range. 20. Yeah. Well, this is why I think that the, 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 the kids are watching the sister stuff, man. I, I don't know. They if they, I don't know if that's sisters. it. Do you reckon? I'm just wondering because I'm so confused. I, that, I find that incredibly repulsive. The whole idea that it could even be vaguely incestual, like right. But um, first of all, she's a stepsister. Stepsister. So you're not. Yeah. You're not. You know. You might. You're not related by blood. I would assume it's like. Because here's the thing, divorce is so big Still in America, not cool. right? I, I agree. I'm just trying to think of the logic behind it. There's a lot of divorces in America, a lot of broken families and stuff like that. It's a real modern thing. So all these kids, like, you know, his his side of the family's broken up. His dad remarries. And now the woman he's remarried also has a, a child from a previous relationship, a daughter. So now you're stuck in a house with this hot teenage girl. And of course, now she's technically your sister, so you can't fancy her. So they take, they go to the internet. That's all I'm it's saying. It's the forbidden yeah, fruit. Yeah, the forbidden fruit. I think maybe that's it. I'm just trying to rationalize it because I find, I, I don't like the idea that all those people out there, like that, that, that search term, I can understand the pervs, all the, all the nerds, like Overwatch, that's the other one as well. Like obviously that's largely played by, by kids and stuff like this. And it's like hentai, I think it's fine. But like, I think it's, it's an idea that so, so many people are, kind of into something repulsive. I'm just trying to rationalize it and say, okay, who is this? Where is this coming from? And the answer is the people who control the internet. That's right. Oh, teenagers. No. I, I I don't know if uh, it is teenagers watching all the porn in all honesty. You don't know? I, I, don't, I don't think, think it there's is. there's definitely a lot of teenagers watching porn, but I think, I feel like there's lots of uh, lots of older dudes watching it too. I, I, I would I say that it's mostly dudes. Uh, I know that like a lot of people are like, oh, it's watch be porn dudes. too, but I think it's got to be majority consumed by dudes, right? Well, yeah, oh yeah. in Nepal, it's almost all women. 
Right. Wow. There's like wow, five people in Nepal that actually have the internet. So, but in, in the uh, in in, in no, Europe and America, um, and and the whole of Russia, Australia, a lot of South America, it's actually twenty six percent of the viewership is female, or just just slightly under that twenty twenty to twenty six percent. But in uh, parts of South America, in Brazil and a lot of Africa and the whole of India and China and all that area and Greenland, it, it's above average. A lot of women watching porn. So, uh, oh, it's a sushi restaurant, right? Yeah, this is um, this is more interesting than porn for and, sure. Uh, the, 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 often on broad, they have a very laissez-faire attitude towards if you're a vegetarian or a vegan. Okay, you can you can tell them, and they'll usually be able to give you something. Um, but I'm really more of a when I'm on holiday. I just don't want to not die of nuts. Like I had a couple of times when I actually did have allergic reactions to nuts. Like there was a thing where a guy brought me a smoothie and it was like, I, I had like a banana, strawberry, and I think it was like avocado or something smoothie, right? And I was like, okay, that sounds weird, but I'll have it, sure. And so I drank it and then I started to get really itchy and I know I knew immediately I'd, I'd eaten some nuts and I couldn't figure out what it was. It turned out that, that he'd used wal walnut milk in it. And I was like, the fuck is walnut milk? Like, where did you even get that from? He just said nut um, milk. He just jizzed on it. That's all that happened. I, th I, I think I think he basically, I think I think he, it was just milk and he put, I think he put nuts in it, walnuts in it, just in the smoothie. Just hadn't told me. And so that was one time. And then there was this other time like- um, So what happened? Did you break some... out in hives and stuff or what? Yeah. Well, yeah, a little bit. I got really, get really itchy throw. It's like, it's like so, slightly awkward feeling. It's like really- like heartburn and stuff. Anyway, it was horrible. But they I must have nut on. allergies in Spain. So they what the do, fuck? they do. But they have a sort of more we don't give a fuck attitude to some to some that some lawyer a, up, a, Lewis. A, a dietary I can't believe you went to fucking Spain on vacation. Any anyway, went to, so that's one thing that happened. I, it happened again when I had some like churros or something, and which I shouldn't really have anyway because they're like made with butter. But you know, fuck it. It wasn't. Yeah, I, I, I'm not one of these guys who's gonna not eat anything or just eat a fucking banana or be a bitch about it. If someone like brings me food, the thing is like there's this thing about um, vegans which they say, you know, imagine like you're a vegan and you order the wrong food, which happened to me, like for example. And um, rather than not eat what they brought you and that thing being thrown in the bin and then they, then them making a whole separate thing for me to eat, I'm just going to eat what they fucking given me, right? Because I guess my parents brought me up to not be a dick. Okay? Right. Um, they if, fucked up. If someone, if someone brings me some food and it's wrong, I'm going to be like, sure, I'll fucking, I'll, I'll eat it or whatever. I'm not going to order more. I'm not going to faff around. I'm usually going to be okay with it. Anyway, this thing happened. So I was in a sushi restaurant, um, which I like. I like sushi because you can get vegetarian sushi, and it's, and Japanese food generally is very easy to go vegan on, right? Because it's just rice and, and vegetables, or like you know, you can get like edamame beans. You know, you can get like a bunch of stuff, like just some 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 leaves in some fucking soy sauce. It's a piece of piss, right? Usually for me. Yeah. And so I ordered like this vegetarian sushi and it was like, you know, it was like a sushi section. So it was like, you know, I'd seen someone else on one of the other tables have it. Okay. And obviously I was ordering it in the menu in Spanish and I sort of pointed at it and said, I vaguely pointed at it and said vegetarian sushi to the guy. And he obviously didn't understand me. And anyway, what I got brought was, which I found out when I got the bill later, was actually the modern sushi. Right. Okay? Um, now they were like, so on the menu, I remember there was like vegetarian sushi, traditional sushi, and modern sushi. And it used to be that I would eat like these sushi sort of selections, right? You go, because we used to go out with Humble and sometimes even still do. Um, and they have like an omakase, which means kind of chef's choice. It doesn't actually mean that. It sort of means we'll cook. But anyway, it's a thing. That, that, and they bring you a selection of whatever they, the chef's recommendation. And you remember, Sips, we went to Vegas yeah. and we had a, a Vegas omakase, which was in a sushi place there. And they bought this incredible plate of sushi. Man, that was a, that was a fun trip. It was me, yeah, you, Duncan, Redacted, and Redacted were there, and it was a great, <laughs> great. It was a, it was actually a really fun trip, though, wasn't it? Vegas. And, and you Vegas. had a bowl of rice. Uh, rice. Yeah, okay. That's right. Um, and we had loads of crazy stuff, and you just had a bowl of rice, and it was funny as fuck, and we all laughed about it a lot at the time. Yeah. But I actually remember that being a little bit gross. Okay. Now, here's the thing, like. I remember going to sushi restaurants and all the time, I really like the experience of eating, but the fancier it is, the grosser it gets, okay? And I've had this experience so many fucking times and I sort of came to a realization that the food they were bringing me was 
just unpleasant. Like the, the like, and the same thing when you go to like a fancy French or English restaurant, they bring you stuff like the most fancy food in the world. Okay, let's just pick the two most expensive and fancy foods in the world: caviar and oysters. Both of which immediately turn my stomach. Just the thought, and even before I was a, like a vegetarian, I just they're they're very strong, very fishy, like like slimy, like. These are not positive, like, things, yeah. you know? I, give me a fucking bag of Quavers anytime. I would rather have a fucking grab bag of Quavers and stick my fucking fist in there than have to eat oysters or mussels or fucking caviar or, or, or also some of these things that they make at, like, posh restaurants, like sweet meats and things like this, which are, like, fucking the basically the internal organs of fucking birds or some shit, like fucking deep-fried in the fucking jism of a Mate, you should fucking have an ortolan. Ortolan. I mean, exactly. Like, like, or like a century egg, or like, do you know what I mean? Any of these things that are just, just on, honestly, like the, and and it's a scale. Like, I guess it must be this thing with like fancy food. Anyway, I went. I I I had this 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 sushi, modern sushi, and uh, for the life of me, I've had I've had sushi all over the world. I've been to Japan. I've been to fucking Vancouver. I've been to San Francisco. These are all like pretty fancy places. And I've been to some fancy places with some fancy people. And it's been nice. I've had a nice time. I've had a nice experience. But their idea of bon sushi, okay, was like a little a little nigiri um, rice roll thingy on, and a, a fried egg on it. Like, <laughs> just like like a, a breakfast fried egg. That sounds egg, good. Okay? I'd, go, I'd, I'd have and that. So, Why not? But two of those. Okay, so imagine they brought you two tiny pieces of rice with two fried eggs, right? One on each. Yeah. And then I'm, I shit you not, the other two in this modern sushi selection were two more pieces of rice with two burgers. <laughs> like just the burger patty. Nice. On them. I'm not even joking that sounds, that sounds you. It was like, imagine this, great. what they present you with. They bring you this plate, two burgers and two eggs with two fucking sushi rolls under each of them. And I just looked at it and I thought, this is so far away from what I ordered. Like, I ordered the vegetarian sushi. <laughs> like, if you'd bought me the traditional one with salmon and prawns and stuff, I probably would have been all right. But like, you could not have like fucking misfired more on, 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 on anything. It was wild. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So, so, I got, so a, I got a question. Yeah. Sips, right. what do you got against Spain? No, nothing. I was just, I'm just joking around. <laughs> okay. I, n- absolutely nothing. I, in fact, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm lying. But, um, okay. but You went to Barcelona relatively recently, didn't you? No, I didn't. For the but, thing? Uh, oh, didn't you? I thought, thought you did. were going to say like, oh, you know, because your first, the first thought when you think of British people going to Spain is they're going to go to like one of the big resorts with yeah. all the, the gammon people and just sit there getting pink and then drinking at the Irish pub and having yes. a fry up. I get it. Yeah. But that would be like saying that if you came on holiday to Britain, you're just going to go to Blackpool. Which, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which or a lot of people why do. Why would you? What really right? set it off for me, this sushi, was that they just handed me a knife and fork as well. Like as it, they put the plate down and handed me a knife and fork. And I was like... What am I looking at here? You know what I mean? I, f- I can feel imagine. Like they just got it so fucking wrong. The, the Lewis rage. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I can just, imagine that. Too. I just picture it in my head. I just sort of looked up at it. Like, I, I was so stunned. I couldn't. I couldn't process it. Um, <laughs> I, it was. Hey, I don't it, have it, a laugh it, with you. It, like that. it floored me. It was like one of those times where you, I, I like. I laughed in disbelief, right? And sometimes I was watching this thing on fucking Netflix. I watch a lot of these criminal things, right? Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> and they get this guy. And a lot of the things that a lot a lot of the ones that I watch are like the real, the real life ones. Like I was watching this thing about John De De Damnyuk or whatever. His John name De Damnyuk, like yeah, this, I watched that. That was really yeah, on good. Netflix. About this. So he was basically the the very last kind of Nazi oh yeah kind of I wanted to criminal. watch that actually do it it's really good I was gonna watch I was gonna watch it and I was like I, I my I was I can't speak I, it's so emotional <laughs> no it, it's, I was gonna watch it okay I, I like the look of it I turned on I turned on Netflix one night and I saw that and I was like holy shit this looks pretty good so I went to my wife and I said look at this this looks pretty pretty good right and she took one look at it and she's like I'm fucking, I'm fucking sick of Nazis. And I said, all right. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, yeah, she's like, I, it's too heavy. I just want to watch something light. You know, I'm it sick. Is, I'm sick of, heavy. I'm sick of it all these heavy, Nazis. Heavy. And I, and, and I just sort of did like a quick mental inventory. I was like, okay, what have we watched recently? That's had 
no, nothing. Uh, and so I made the joke. I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I know. You must be exhausted because of all, like, the fucking Nazi movies we've been watching recently. <laughs> And then she was just like, ha ha, very funny. I know, you know, I'm trying to make a point that I don't want to just like my whole life to be watching all of this heavy shit all the time, you know? Like, I think I she just some, didn't feel in the mood and fair enough. Like, some light relief from time to time. And yeah, I no, like, I, I completely get that. I, I find it very hard to find things to watch with other people. You know, we certainly when you like, when like, you know, tips you're coming over tonight, you know, and if we were trying to watch something on Netflix, it would be like, have you seen this? Oh yeah, I watched that. It was good. I was like, okay. Oh, have you seen this? And you're like, uh, no. And I'm like, well, I have, it's quite good. And do you know what I mean? You'll go through it between you. You'll find absolutely fuck all to watch. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's basically this thing where he is uh, this American guy who lived in America as like an auto worker for like 30 yeah, years yeah. in relative peace um, and tranquility and got a family who loved him and stuff. And then they found out from this he sort Ukrainian. of- Ukrainian. So he was part of that, this sort of when the, when the Nazis went through, uh, or the, the German army went through Ukraine and everything, they recruited, they recruited a bunch of people. They some like, young hey, men. You, you want to join the SS and kill Jews? And they were like, yeah. Like they found a plenty of Ukrainians who were nicely anti-Semitic, rolled them straight into the SS death machine, right? So this guy, yeah. Dadanyuk, was one of them. But his paperwork was all fucked up. He claimed he'd never been there, but his story didn't make sense. Like, it just did not add up. Yeah. And all these guys, these, these Israelis who were like survivors of the Holocaust, were like, that is the fucking guy, I swear to God. But then their stories, because these were old guys, you know? Like, their stories started to fall apart a little bit, and they didn't quite add up. They said, what, what do you mean? How did you get there? Like, one of the guys, they asked him, how did you get from wherever it was in Poland to America, to Florida? And he said... We took the train and they were like, oh, the guy's <laughs> fucking senile. Like, we can't trust his opinion now on anything. But that's not, I don't think, I mean, especially if, if you've ever. He couldn't remember known, the name of his son who died. Right, but if you've in ever known senile people, let alone. They will remember shit from 80 years ago, yes, but they will not exactly. remember shit from 80 minutes ago. That yes. is, so yeah. right there, I think dismissing his evidence was bullshit. Um, it's a it is a very moving documentary. It's very moving. It's very difficult, and it's very much you swing back and forth in the do documentary as well. Because it's very much you're on his side for a bit, and then you're not on his side. Then you're on his side again, and you're not on his side. And you could see how the people who were doing the trial had such difficulty, like weighing up, like what to do, and and whether or not he was guilty. But also that all the political implications. Yeah, this of it anyway. huge public pressure. I mean, this is this is a Nazi in Israel on trial, which is a triumph in itself. And then it's like, we've got to find this guy guilty, but we've also got to do the right thing. Like if we let him go and but, say, yeah. oh, well, you know, we can't be sure. It's like, what the fuck? Like it, it was really, it's very, very, very but, interesting. But one of the things that I saw a lot of in that documentary, and also I see of a lot of other times, is people thinking they know and can read other people by looking in their eyes and reading their body language. Oh, so for example, there's these there's these moments where like, you know, people see him, you know, say somewhat say so someone says something absolutely ridiculous on the witness stand. And you know, and he like smiles, right? He he like um, and you can tell like it's almost him like being in disbelief, you know, or something like this, or like laughing at the ludicrousness of what they've accused him of or said he did, or or he just he just says, you, you know, that you're a liar, you know, like and and but some people are thinking, oh well, you know, he's what he's smiling right. about the Holocaust, you know, like, and I think that that that's the problem. Like people don't react the way you think they yeah. should or are going to react, um, and it's it's crazy. Like I read this Malcolm Gladwell thing about how how strangers react and stuff when you put them under. You ask them to to tell the truth or lie about something that they've done or not done, and you can't often can't tell. You know, you 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 could look someone in the eyes and and you could you you've got a fifty fifty chance, of, and, but you think you have an eighty twenty. You think people think they know what other people are thinking. I, I mean, the other problem really, is there are a lot of there are a lot of things that people think innately look like lying, but are actually just nerves look, look or guilty. telling the truth. So for example, one of the things people think is that if you can't meet someone's gaze and you're sort of looking around when you're talking that you're probably lying. But in fact, it's more likely when someone's lying, they're looking at your face really intently to see if the lie is working and to look for any sign that they can swing the conversation and convince you. And if they're losing you, then they can swap threads and, and try a different approach. Like that. someone staring right at you is actually less honest 
than someone sort of who's just looking around and talking normally. Because think about when you have a conversation with someone and you're being honest, you're just chatting. How often do you just stare right at them? I actually find that quite disconcerting. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 just I rarely right make at you when like, talk. like heavy eye contact with anyone when I'm talking to them. Like it's just. I mean, it's like the only way you do right? it is, is if you are flirting with someone. Or, you know, I mean, I know when I when I met Sips up in Bristol last time, he was looking deep into my eyes. Like, he, you know, we couldn't, <laughs> yeah. could, couldn't tear our gaze off each other, just undressing him with my eyes. And he was doing the same. Yeah, it, it was, was a wonderful night. That, that was different. I guess it's, yeah. We shouldn't have mentioned that in public, actually. Sorry. Sorry, that's, Sips. That's I know you different. went, like, like Lewis's holiday in Spain, you wanted to keep it private, but it's out there now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. So I, I just guess, like, what I'm saying is that learning this has made me profound not profoundly but more uncomfortable about i think if you if i didn't know about it and i sort of thought i knew what i was doing like i feel like also there's this this real problem of stubborn made your bed and you have to sleep with it when it was these old guys and they <laughs> identified this it. guy sleep in it you're not meant to fuck your bed. He's a fucking bed fucker, Sips. <laughs> There's like <laughs> he's like a, the bike fuckers and the pavement fuckers, and now you got Lewis the bed. Well, fucker. when you don't have a foreskin, you know, you've got to do something. Oh God. Just fuck a um, bed, Jesus. Uh, lube it up, lube like, it up, kids. Don't forget, if you're gonna fuck a bed, lube it up. Get a Huggies oh, Dry yeah. Night mattress uh, protector thing on there and just fuck your bed. Okay, go for it. Well, that's a lube good idea. Lube up and fuck your bed. Uh, so, but I, I guess what I'm saying is that the, the certainly like in the documentary it was that these judges and people were very much locked in on their decision you know they like they there's you see it often when someone like a sheriff is convinced that some guy did it and then evidence comes out that he didn't do it but he sticks with his story he's like i still think you did it and then more evidence comes out and he's like yep still think you did it i was right the whole time it's like well he definitely didn't do it i still think you did it it's like what well, he didn't though because there's camera work of him not doing it. I still think he did it. It's like they can't and it, no one criticizes that person for being ignorant. They're like, well, good for him. He stuck to his guns. No, fuck that guy. He's a fucking ignorant prick. He should be willing to change his mind. Sorry about that. But I feel very did strongly you, did about Did you spit about, when you said that? that. <laughs> he did. He dribbled. <laughs> oh, you could tell. It, uh, oh my God, I did. I did spit. I was angry. Because like, uh, but these these things make your emotions run high. Because these, there's people's lives we're talking about, you know, at the end of the day. You know, I think that, that that's that's the thing, isn't it? Like we have, in the same documentary, it sort of talks about how, or, how so many of these Nazis were given shelter in America because they were useful, you know, because they or because they knew about rockets or the, or technology and and you know some of these were terrible criminals who were like just given being like oh yeah you you're you're useful to us so forget about all that Nazi stuff you're American now just don't do any killing just don't kill that anybody. was the, that was the interesting go. ending was pointing out how many Nazis went to America. Because the thing is, uh, post World War II, the immediate threat was not the Nazis; they'd lost. The immediate threat was the the Soviets. So the yeah. the Americans were like, "Well, if we don't get the Nazis out of there, the Soviets will, and we want them because we we know the next war is is coming." Like that in their but mind, a, it was like, the, "We yeah. need the rockets." And there was a there was a mirror there that the Nazis were you know, conquered the U Ukraine and took the Ukraines, killed the Jews, and then the Americans conquered the Germans took the Nazis to kill the Soviets. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's such an obvious kind of, Nuts though, huh? I don't know, hypocritical kind of behavior. But, you know, we've we've certainly demonized. Um, I think I think post-World War II, there was this desire that to rehabilitate, you know, the Nazis because because previous to that, you know, it was like, well, what are we going to do? We can't kill all, can't kill everyone in the country. You know, we have to, <laughs> we've got all these defeated Nazis. We have to denazify them. Um but you know, it felt like you know taking a ninety-one-year-old man, um, and, and you know, you it's know, closure though, isn't it? I mean, if the dude, what the dude did, does he deserve? Does he deserve to be rehabilitated? This is it's it's a, it's a massive, massive question, and I can understand why you would want. There's justice. so many little factors in there, and you know, so it was it was just fuck so interesting. Fuck Nazis, man! But, I don't, you know, man, just I really lock fuck them up. Nazis. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying it's good. I, I just think there's so many viewpoints to be had, and the more I see all the viewpoints, and the more I see all the questions, the more it kind of makes me like, kind of, I don't know, a little bit. Uh, I, I don't envy the judges who have to make these decisions, you know. No. And then stick to their guns afterwards too, because what's these? Because it's it's obvious they interviewed all the judges from the original trial, and they're all like fucking eighty five, ninety years old now, and they're all sticking to their guns. You know, they're all very much like we we're confident we make the right decision. You know, he was definitely did this, blah blah blah. And you're like, well, you can't ever say for sure, can you? You know, it's a tricky one. But they seem to feel like they did have to, and maybe they need. Maybe that's part of the 
justice system that you have to have this kind of this closure, this idea that you know once you're declared guilty, your the, the mind is the thing is set to rest. I don't know. It's funny, isn't it? Anyway, sorry about that. That's I gotta watch that. Yeah, it's worth waffle, watching. Yeah, worth I'm watching. gonna I'm gonna watch the crap yeah. out of that one, and then I'm gonna come back, Lewis, with some uh, some of my own some points thoughts. of view. That are going to yeah. directly... Sorry to end it on a bit of a downer, hey, guys. Didn't mean to... That's the way it goes sometimes. The it Triforce is... podcast is not a road... There's no roadmap. No. We no. just get in the car and drive. And don't worry. In terms of ratios and stuff, we talked a lot about shitting and porn today, too. So. Yeah. So so we went there <laughs> early. Not balances, quite often, that's our final destination. Out. It balances out. So don't worry you know, about for, it. Normally, that's the we end up We end up in poop and porn town. Yeah. As it is. I'm going to go pop out. We went to I'm Nazi pop out and get myself, get myself a grab bag. Lewis is popping out. Um, going to play the piccolo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what even is that? I'm now whistling. It's the Robocop. Um, it's the Robocop music. Do, 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 I know. Christmas movie. Like that's that's yeah, a Christmas be one I movie. Watch Christmas. I especially like the the festive scene where the man uh, drives the truck directly into the vat of toxic waste and his face starts melting. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Help me. A great moment. Get away from that's me! That's when man. I know Christmas is guy. just around the corner when that man's face is melting in front of my very eyes. And I'm like, I love best it. bit Hell is yeah. when the other guy drives into him and he just smashes him into liquid. <laughs> Yes, I love that bit. I love that Man. bit too. That's that's what I know. It must be Christmas Eve, and uh, <laughs> the fire the fire's crackling. Robocop is on. Hell yeah! Yeah, that's what it is. All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you next see week. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.